In this video, we're going to talk about topic 1.5, which was um, finding limits uh, and using the different properties of limits to find them and using a graphical stem. Normally, I do um, a parallel problem, but due to the nature of this one, I just decided to do the one that you're supposed to do. So if you haven't tried it yet, try it and then come back and watch the parts that you need help on. So we're going to start with the limit as x approaches 0 of g of x over f of x. The best way to really approach this is by to find the left hand, the right hand limit and the left hand limit. So I'm going to kind of do my work over here. So I've got, I'm going to start by looking at the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of g of x. And I'm going to divide that by the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f, or sorry, the left, not the right the left of f of x. So here I am in the graphs, and I know they're a little bit fuzzy. Um, so g of x approaching 0 from the left side looks like it's 0. Um, and then 0 for, ooh, sorry. Um, and then on the f of x, 0, or 0 from the right side is 2. But what's really, really going on here, because that makes it look like it's zero. But what's really going on here is really, I'm as I'm approaching this from the left side, I'm getting a very a small negative number. So it's really a small negative number is what I'm getting. Because it's not really zero because we're approaching. So when I have a small number and I divide it by a big a bigger number that gives me zero so it does ultimately end up um zero but that's what the it's really it's a small number that is negative that is near zero all right let's see if the other side comes out the same so the limit as x approaches zero from the right of g of x divided by the limit as x approaches zero from the right of f of x okay so I'm going to look at zero from the right side. So as I'm getting bigger and bigger and bigger, again, as I'm, I'm approaching, I'm getting a small positive number. So a small positive number that's close to zero. And then on this one, as I am approaching from the right, it looks like I'm still getting a two, but a small positive number divided by two is still zero because it's really, really tiny. So overall, the limit of this one would be zero because my right and my left hand limits were equal to one another. Okay, let's take a look at this next piece. So we've got to look at um, one, negative one, and it's always safest to look at the right and the left, both the right and the left hand limits when we're doing these. So I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches negative one from the left of f of x times g of x. And so I'm just going to go ahead and separate those now because we know that is one of the limit properties that we have. Um, okay, so f of x times g of x. So negative one from the left um, on f looks like it's two. And then on g, negative one from the left looks like it's one. So it looks like this is a limit of two coming at it from the left hand side. Sorry. Okay, so I made a boo-boo on that one. I didn't look at negative one from the left. So let's try that again. Negative one from the left is equal to the y value of one. And then again, negative one from the left on the G looks like it's equal to one. Okay, so I am equal to one coming from the left. Now let's look at it from the right. So the limit as X approaches negative one from the right of F of X times the limit as X is approaching negative one from the right of G of X. Okay, so we are going to look at the right sides this time. So on f of x, as I'm coming at negative 1 from the right, I'm at 2. And on g of x, as I'm coming at negative 1 from the right, I am at 1. 
And so this is equal to two. And because the right and the left hand limits are not equal, the limit overall does not exist. So it would be DNE. All right, let's do a similar thing, but we're gonna look at um, as X is approaching two. So I'm gonna erase some of this so that I just have some space to write. Okay, so let's look at this one. Again, I'm gonna look at it from the right and the left and make sure they match. So the limit as X is approaching two from the left. And again, we're multiplying, so I'm gonna find those separately. Might as well use, split it up into my properties now. G of X. Okay, and this equals, so let's go ahead and look at our graph and see what this equals. So two from the left, I'm gonna erase some of the scribbles. Two from the left on the F graph looks like it's going to positive one. And two from the left on the G graph looks like it's zero. So it looks like this is equal to zero. Then we're gonna do the limit as X approaches two from the right of F of X times the limit as X approaches two from the right of G of X. All right, so let's try it from the right. So from the right side, here's where the graph actually exists. And it looks like it's going to negative one for the F graph. And then from the right, it looks like it's going to zero again. So it looks like it's zero. So our right and our left hand limits are equal. So our overall limit would be zero on this one. Okay, the next one, again, I'm going to still look at it. It's always safest to look at it from the right and from the left, just to make sure. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. The limit as X approaches zero from the left. And I could go ahead and split this up. Remember when I have this coefficient, it's really just multiplying the limit by that. So I'm going to go two times the limit of f of x plus three times the limit as x approaches zero from the left of g of x. Okay, so we've got two. Let's look at the limit as, f of x, as x is approaching zero from the left on the f graph. So zero from the left looks like it's two. And then we need to approach zero from the left on the G graph. So zero from the left on the G graph looks like it's zero. So this looks like its overall limit would be four. So now let's check it out from the right. So I'm still gonna do the same thing, two times the limit as X approaches zero from the right of F of X plus three times the limit as X approaches zero from the right of G of X. Okay, so two, the limit as X is approaching zero from the right. So zero on the F graph, zero from the right is here. So that looks like it's at two. And then on the G graph, zero from the right, looks like it's going to zero. So plus three times zero. So this looks like, again, it is four. So it looks like my overall, my right and I left match. So my overall limit is four. Okay, on this next one here, it's, this one's a little bit more complicated. This one's heading definitely down toward closer to that advanced road. So technically I have a composed function there. So I know that I really could rewrite this one as F of the limit as X is approaching zero from the left of X plus two. So the question is what is going on with that X plus two? So if I draw my graph of X plus two, it would look like this. And if I am approaching this from the left side, I am coming at it from underneath. So I am below. So I'm coming at it, it would be negative. It looks like I'm approaching a value of two from underneath. So this would be equivalent to the limit as X approaches two from the left of F of X. So now I'm gonna to go to my F of X graph and look at two from the left. So two from the left is equal to one. So this is equal to one. All right, looking at this next one. So again, it's a composed function. So I would rewrite this as 
f the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of x squared. So now the question is, what does this x squared look like? So we know very well that an x squared graph is a parabola. And we would know negative 1 is there. So we know that as I'm approaching that negative 1 from the left side, I'm coming at it from above. When I put negative 1 into x squared, I know I get a 1 out of it. So I know I'm approaching 1, but I'm coming at it from above. So that would be a positive side. So x would so this would be equivalent to x approaches 1, or the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, of f of x. All right, so let's try, check that on the graph. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. So 1 from the right side looks like it's going to 0. So this one is equal to 0. Okay. So these ones we're considering a little bit more advanced. Those last two were kind of trending towards the advanced there. So let's see what we can do with these ones here. So we have um, a composed function. So we know when we do a composed function, the outer function goes on the outside. So g equals the limit as x is approaching negative 2 of f of x. And let's see if there's a break in the graph at negative 2 at all. Negative 2, no, there is no break. So um, it's still really safest to test it from both sides. But let's go ahead and just take a look and see what happens from both sides. We can probably do that visually. So let's see, negative 2 on the, we wanted, it was, f was on the inside. So looking at negative 2 from the left looks like it's 0. Negative 2 from the right looks like it's 0, so it looks like my value is 0. So this piece becomes 0. I really, what's really, pro, we need to make sure that, um, we are making that this is um, what you call it, that it's continuous, okay? That g of zero is continuous. So really, what this means is that we've got the limit as x approaches zero of g of x. So let's see what's going on because that would really produce plugging a zero into there. So let's see, g of zero. And let's double check the right and the left at g of zero. So from the the left it's zero, from the right it's zero, it looks like overall this one is zero. This one probably should have been proficient, huh? Because that was way easier. All right, and it's really because g of course was continuous that we could still do that. All right, let's take a look at the next one here. So this one we have, we would do f on the outside and then we do the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. So let's look at 2 from the right on the f graph. Okay, so 2 from the right side looks like it's producing a negative 1. And this one's a little bit trickier because it's hard to tell if that's above or below. All right, I just went and looked at it. We're going to think about that one more time. I think I started doing it wrong. So let's try that again. Okay, so this piece is correct. I went from the wrong direction. I grabbed it from the right again. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x. So let's go from the left side. It's definitely approaching 2, but it's and it's coming from the negative side, which is hard to tell it's hard to deal with this one because we don't have like that above below thing going on but since it's coming from the negative side that would make it a negative on there so it would be we know its value is two it's coming from the negative side so x is approaching two from the negative side so we're looking at the limit as x is approaching two from the left of f of x okay so now i'm going to go find that value okay so when I go back here and I go look at 2 from the left side again, it is equal to 2. So it actually ends up equaling 2. All right, let's look at this next one. I'm going to explain this one. I don't think I would put this one on this particular one on the test. This one's compared to what we did on the last one is a little bit, has some weird nuances to it. So um, I would probably still start with pulling my f out front and following the rule for composition limit as x approaches 2 from the right 
we've got that negative. So it's like multiplying by a coefficient. So I'd throw that in front of f of x. Okay, so I know that I have f of negative 1. And then um, we're approaching 2 from the right side on f. So I'm going to go to the right side of 2, which no matter what I do, that's a horizontal line. It's consistently always going to get me a negative 1. So I'm good. That negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Okay, so I'm going to go to f of 1, and f of 1 is exactly equal to, um, is equal to 2, okay? And it's because of the consistency of the horizontal lines that we're allowed to do that on this one, which is a little bit weird compared to some of the other ones that we've done. So that one I don't think I would put on a test. That one's too tricky. Okay, this last one. So we've got, um, we're gonna do the same thing. We've got a composition of functions. So the F goes on the outside. So we have the limit as X approaches negative one of G of X minus 2.5. I could use my properties and separate those into two separate limits. We don't have to. I just know that I'm finding the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of x and of negative 2.5, which the negative 2.5 is just going to be 2.5. So let's go look at um, g of x as it approaches negative 1 from both sides, really, is what we need to look at. So looking at negative 1 from the left and from the right, it's approaching the limit of 1. So it's the same from both sides, which means that I'm looking at negative 1.5. Now, as long as my function's continuous, I can just do find f of negative 1.5. So let's look at f of negative 1.5. So negative 1.5 would be right here. And since it's continuous, I can just look at the value there, which looks like it's at about 0.5. So there's a couple of ways I can think about that. It could be written as just f of 1.5, or I can still find the limit as x approaches 1.5 from both sides, which means I'm just going to plug it in. I'm sorry, negative 1.5. And we saw on the graph that that was just going to be 0.5. Sorry this video got so long, but hopefully it makes a little